Have you ever had a clever comeback the day after an argument and thought, damn, I wish I had said that? Lucky for you, writing allows you that do-over. Hi all, Hank from Write to Rail here. Today we're looking at four words, or more appropriately, word groups, to avoid using consistently in your scripts. Some of you might make these mistakes, some of you might not. But the key is to go back over your writing and make sure none of them happen subconsciously. Number four, is doing, are doing. For some of us, this may go without saying, but with newer writers in mind, we wanted to mention it just the same. Not exactly a grammar major here, but using the present progressive tense, or words ending in ing, is bad and something I lost major points for early on in my writing. Most of us do it as new writers, for whatever reasons, but use it in each and every line of description and you'll be quickly dismissed. When writing your scripts, characters do things, not are doing them. For instance, Hank talks over the captain, not Hank is talking over the captain. The captain and Hank slap each other, not the captain and Hank are slapping each other. Again, accidentally including one or two of these in your script doesn't instantly equal the trash can, but if your description is loaded with them, your story won't shine through the assault to the reader's eyeballs. The one note I will make here is that using ing at the end of the word isn't necessarily wrong. Sometimes it makes more sense and sounds more natural, especially if one action follows another. For instance, Hank walks down the street, talking on his phone. Number three. Well, man, uh, yeah. This group tends to act as a lead-in for dialogue, and is one of those subconscious groups I mentioned earlier. Used once or twice in an entire script, then it'll slip by. But newer writers especially tend to use this one arguing it simulates how we really speak. Dialogue should flow naturally, sure. But think back to that clever comeback idea I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. Each and every line deserves to be the most interesting it can be. Interior, classroom, day. Sam pats the vice principal on the back. Yeah, you're a good guy, Mr. G. Mr. G looks skeptical, but continues into, onto his desk. A kick-me sign stuck to his shirt. Man, I can't believe you just did that. Sam smiles proudly. Well, someone had to. Yeah, but that was cool. He reclines in his seat, cool and relaxed. I know, buddy. Exaggerated example? Perhaps. But I've reviewed a few scripts recently that used man or buddy in three separate entries three times in a row. On top of that, one of was a pro script with nearly every entry beginning with the word well. So check your own writing. Number two. Just, as, so, I mean. This is the group that gave us the idea for the video you're currently watching. The captain was rewriting an older script and remarked that he used the word just so much he wanted to throw his own script in the garbage. It made me chuckle because I discovered recently I used the word as after damn near every comma. Go back over your own writing. Are you using the same word or phrase so consistently that a reader won't be able to ignore it? That's a problem, because the reader's concentrating on your grammar, what's happening in your story won't matter. Exterior, tool shed, night. The captain creeps around in the bushes. Just as he's ready to run, a branch snaps nearby, so the captain freezes. He waits as he breathes heavily. Hank stumbles out of the shed. The bloody knife in his hands shines in the moonlight. Just like that, the captain sprints deeper into the woods. I mean, what else can a person do when facing a mass murderer? This group in particular can be some of the biggest culprits of not making worthwhile contributions to your dialogue, so use them sparingly. And number one. Hello. Hi. I'm... Another group of words to eliminate from dialogue. Remember the rule. Enter a scene late and leave early. Waste time on characters exchanging mundane greetings and your reader won't think fondly on your abilities. The same thing goes for goodbye, see ya, later. Interior, cafe, day. Sean walks into the cafe, sees Carol. She waves. Hey, Carol. Hi, Sean. How are you? A little under the weather, you? I'm fine. Good. She stirs her coffee. So do you have my cocaine? She points to the engorged sugar caddy on the table. Wait for me to leave. Understood. Same payment as last time? Sure. She smiles. I look forward to it. With a final sip of her coffee, she, stum she stands and leaves. Bye, Carol. Along the same lines, there's no need to continually repeat characters' names. This is another rare instance where it's safe to mimic everyday conversation. Think about it. When you speak to someone, is their name inserted into every sentence? I don't think so. 
However, you can use these mistakes to your advantage, subtly breaking and making fun of the rules by building character and story. Here's an example. Interior, office, night. Agent Doyle enters, hand extended to Captain Barnes who sits behind the desk, devouring a stack of files. Hi, I'm... You've never, you're familiar with the case? Well, you came highly recommended, so don't make that someone look stupid. Doyle doesn't risk a response. After an awkward moment, Barnes finally looks up. Good. Seconds stretch on forever, Barnes weighing Doyle and Doyle too afraid to breathe. Barnes slams the file folder shut and hands it over. Welcome to the squad. Go find a desk. Doyle reluctantly takes the folder and exits the office. So there's a short list of words and word groups to avoid using, if you can help it, in your scripts. Did we miss any? Let us know in the comments, share and subscribe if you found this video helpful, and don't forget to check out writetoreal.com for more in-depth screenwriting discussions. Write your butts off.